so this is something new. Uh, I'm going to start digging into my past a little bit, uh, doing some calls with some of the great people that I've met um, across all aspects of my life. Today, for the very first show, uh, I'm really, really happy to have uh, a guy, Eric LeClaire. I've known this guy since 1998. He is, no question, one of the hardest human beings I have ever met in my life, mentally and physically. Um, this guy is so impressive. Uh, an organization is measured by uh, the people that they have within it. Canadian Forces should be so happy that they have a guy like Eric LeClaire in their ranks, uh, a warrior through and through. To me, he's a big inspiration, and I'm really happy to be able to call this guy a friend. Uh, so I was, he's going to be my first guest. So enjoy, enjoy the conversation. And Eric, I can't put on. Uh, you can hear me? Yeah. So this is the first time I've ever done this. Okay. Yeah. And so I wanted to do this. Uh, just I get a chance to talk to you a whole bunch. And I get other people to learn the great Eric LeClaire. Dude, uh -huh. I've been. I've been such a big fan of you for forever. Uh, I feel like uh, the stuff you've done in the soldiering world is is just totally crazy. Uh, I thought maybe we get a chance to catch up, tell how we kind of know each other. I want to go over the stories from Afghanistan and kind of catch up with where you are now. Okay. Dude, you're like you're even older than I do. <laughs> Uh, you've been, <laughs> you haven't you been having an easy life up there in Pat? What's up? No, I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in Gagetown, Devin. I just always think that you're in Pat. I don't know why. What what's but, going on? So yeah, it's the way the light is. Is what the gray is. It's, it's the lighting. I have professional lighting here. No, I'm yeah. joking. That is no, but that I, I'm I'm aging right in front of her eyes. So it's dude, I, I blame the tours, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, I came down here a year and a half ago to the infantry school. Now I'm going back to three RCR. Good. Good. And what are you now? Are you uh sergeant major are you gonna go back and be sergeant major of three RCR? Yeah, I'm gonna do uh uh like probably combat support sergeant major. So that's I've been a sergeant major now for two years. Yeah. So I'll go back and uh, do my time at the combat sport, like recce, snipers, all that stuff. And then uh, we'll see where it goes from there. So hopefully, wow. hopefully I'm in the windows for the Chiefs. But I mean, I have, I I have you know, I have eight years till I'm 55. So, but it, it's a matter of if, if the fucking body is going to hold out, right? Yeah. Yeah, really. I mean, I remember when we were on the Iron Man so long ago, I always figured that you'd be running the whole CF by the time you got out. So you're yeah. not too far off now. Yeah. Well, we, we met, what, 1999? I when did you think get it was 1998. Because you did your first Ironman 99, wasn't it? Or 2000? Yeah. No. Oh, jeez. What was it? Uh, oh, my God. I, I, I feel like I did the Ironman in 99 and then 2000. Because you won. Yeah, you won in two, 2000, right? I think so. Now, I, I feel like I got to one RCR. So Eric and I met at 1RCR, which is uh, Infantry Unit in Petawawa. Uh, I feel like I transferred from PPCLI in March of 98. And wasn't there like a rear party or something? Wasn't most of the battalion gone or something? Yeah, because 98 would have been, uh, yeah, we were in um, Bosnia, right? Bosnia, Bosnia. And then I remember, so I was on rear party. Everybody was gone. 
and you you were on that tour, right? Right. And and I remember uh, that uh, when you guys finally were like rolling back, uh, everybody's like, "Oh, Eric's back!" And like at that time, like I was, I don't know, whatever, like it means anything, but like because uh, there weren't many guys left on Rear Party, uh, you know, some of the guys thought I was pretty strong or whatever and then they're like oh you're gonna meet eric and you guys are gonna <laughs> fight <laughs> i was like so like, what are you talking about we're gonna fight i'm like uh and then and then i remember i do remember where i met you it was in the duke's company uh classroom or uh, office i went up and i shook your hand and dude you almost broke my hand i'm like dude this is a this is a crazy guy right here i was like yeah, but uh, I think that that's when we, I think it was '98 after you came back from Bosnia. Yeah, fuck, that's wow, that's a long time ago. <laughs> Very long wow, time. twenty-two years ago, right? Yeah. yeah. So you left. You left. You went down to the hill. That would have been two thousand one ish. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. 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 But we had a few years there where uh, where we got to have some fun. Uh, Mostly basketball and Iron Man team for us, mostly and, and Duke's company. But yeah. and, and you know what? Like I played Devin. I played in my twenty fifth regionals this year. That's so basketball. amazing, and I and I really want to get to all that. Uh, but I really want people to see the kind of great dudes that we got in the Canadian Armed Forces. Dude, you're the first guy I've brought on. And, and I was like, who's the ho- most hardcore dude I know? Is Eric Claire. There's <laughs> been so many times in my life I've been like, what would Eric do right now? And I'm like, just smash, right? Like, uh, anyways, it's, it's, it's great to have you on. Like, I want to I wanna ask you about some of the tours. So okay. how did it all go with you in Afghanistan? Well, my first one in uh, 05. <clears throat> I was uh, I was part of the embedded training team, right? So pretty much for seven months, trade the Afghans and train them from just your basic soldier stuff to CQB to even firing an AK-47 RPG. So, I mean, that was my first exposure to Afghanistan. Um, again, it was seven months. So I was, I fell under the umbrella of the States, the Americans, uh, which they treated us like gold. Uh, um, so, I mean, uh, that, that was very, it was productive, um, but very sometimes demanding because like we would take uh, a platoon, me and another guy, another captain, we'd take a platoon, we'd have them for three weeks and we'd train them um, from first light to last light and, and then sometimes do present patrols at night. And, and the thing is, is these were Afghans and it was at that point it was hard to trust anybody, right? Um, so that was my first exposure to the sandbox, um, I mean, it, it was good, but it, it it was probably night and day compared to my next one, right? What was that? Was that, was that Kandahar? For my, which one? The first one. That was, out, that was outside of Kabul. Oh, that was in Kabul. Yeah, it was at a camp called Black Horse. It was an American-driven okay. camp. Yeah. Yeah like pull a Cherokee and all that area down there. So, um, but it was, like I said, it was, I enjoyed it. It was just, uh, you know, you're always on your toes as you know. Uh, but it, it was, it was productive. I thought, but mm. because the whole, the whole intent of it was to train these guys. And then we would so slowly, you know, peel back and let them run their own show, but that didn't happen. <laughs> so, right. But yeah, and then and then the next one, the next one saw you down in Kandahar. Yeah, so we were outside of Kandahar. Uh, we were in a uh, like Shoja by Nakani, Nakoni Nakani. Ah oh, man, where where was that? Where was Nakani? Was that east or east of Kandahar? Yeah, it would be east. Yeah. So 
we were we were all in platoon houses so obviously uh bravo company won rcr that was my company and i was five platoon warrant todd weber was in uh four and johnny renu was uh six so we were out of um um like shoja was the main camp was the like the main fob but i mean that area there was fucking ridiculous like uh from ieds to ambushes so that close to Panjway? no not right in Panjway, no so mm. it's uh i wish i had the map it's ah. yeah but there's there's towns fatula folad uh haji baba so for five platoons aor we had four villages um so we were we were pretty uh pretty busy but i mean um i enjoyed it i enjoyed it and yeah. uh, i would go back tomorrow <laughs> i know you would i know you would yeah. now um when, when was that that was 07 was that uh, was no, that, that was the- that was 2010 well that's 2010 okay that that's uh, when, that's when me and michael went over together Right. Okay. So was Michael in the same district as you? So Michael's your brother for people who don't know. Michael's your younger yeah, so brother. Mike, yeah. Michael was a sergeant in three RCR in uh, Oscar company. I was a warrant in uh, Bravo company, one RCR. Michael was five kilometers north of me, his father. Okay. So close. Yeah. And the day when he, June 7th, June 6th, when he got ambushed, I was on um, OP and I seen the horizon lit up. Man, yeah, what's so I mean, like? oh, it was it was it was different. Um, you know, it's different when you're 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 not knowing and that's your your brother out there. And Did you then think was- uh, I got. What's that? You think it was Mike? I just had a feeling, but I got a call on the Emerset phone at two thirty in the morning from my sergeant major at the time and he's like eric what are you doing i'm like what else would i be doing at two in the morning he goes i need to talk to you about some stuff that went on so right away i kind of knew that something was up and then the next day well about four hours later i went up to uh the cp at call sign two and found out it was michael so essentially they got ambushed and he got shot in the arm and then the side so so he was evac um Within he went to to CAF and then he went to Germany, and then uh, obviously he made his way back eventually to Ottawa, and then uh, I went home on compassionate, um, because uh, I was having marriage problems. <laughs> no. Plus Michael. Yeah, so I went. I went. You could cut this shit out too, Devin, if you want. <laughs> uh, no, oh, but I, I I went back. I went back and. Uh, I'm back there, and I met Peter McKay at the time. He came up, visited Michael, That's and the next uh, prime minister. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. great. Awesome dude. Uh, just walked in. No little, no little uh, escorts or not. Just walked in. So me and Dad and and Michael got a picture with him, and that's when my mom was alive, so she was there too, and he was in there for uh, quite some time. So then it started coming close to when I had to go back, right? So, um, you know, yes, I know my brother got injured, but it, it sounds selfish, but I, I I, needed to do my job back over there. So I felt that I had to get over there to get back there. So it's weird because we're at the Ottawa airport, and my mom's and me are sitting down and having uh, some a and at the top of the stairs there, and mom looks at me and she goes, I have a bad feeling about this. I'm like, fuck, mom, don't worry about it. I'm the middle kid. Nothing's going to happen to me. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I boarded the plane the morning of the 21st of July, 2010. I get into uh, Mirage, get all my battle rattle. Uh, the morning of the 22nd, around 9.30 in the morning, I fly out of Mirage, um, do the stopovers here uh get on a chopper from uh calf and fly out to shoja i land at 16 35 july 23rd 2010 or correction july 22nd uh 2010 i land just before supper 
at my at my fob. And that flight, Devin, uh, I was the only person on the Chinook. The doors were open, and it's just constant warm air just slapped me in the face. And th thousands and thousands and thousands of things are, are going through my head that I, I need to be tough. I need to be hard. I need to be focused, and I need to... You know, not let everything from the outside affect me on what I got to do uh, as my job as the warrant. So uh, I land and uh, all my sergeants are there. Uh, remember Norm Godden? Of course. Remember? Of course he, I remember he's Norm. He's there. J.P. Christensen? You remember yeah, him? Yeah. Of course, yeah. Great guy. All those, yeah. all those guys are there and uh, I get off, I grab all my kit. Um and then they're all there out on the HLS, and I get in there, and we're shooting the shit, and I'm like, uh, I need to get a can of dip. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's cheap over there, right? It doesn't cost anything. Oh yeah, it's like it's like it was like four dollars, three three fifty or something stupid it's like that. Right, so you're basically losing money if you don't take it. So yeah. I said to JP, I send to JP a message to make sure you give me a can of long cut uh, Copenhagen. So uh, I, I, he gave me that, and we just, it was pretty quiet, really, like, considering the charisma of JP and, and Norm, uh, it, it was very quiet, and then uh, I just said, you know what, I'm fucking tired, I'm going out on patrol tomorrow, let's go back, and JP looks at me and goes, what do you mean you're going on patrol? I said, I'm going on patrol tomorrow. So anyways, uh, I get in the lab, we go back to the camp, and you know, get all my shit unpacked, and I probably got, I probably, by the time I put my head down, uh, uh, it was just before midnight, and then uh, his patrol was departing at five o'clock in the morning of the morning of the 23rd of July, 2010, so I got up at quarter after four, I go, I make a coffee, I had three pieces of fucking toast with marmalade on it, uh, and, uh, I had all my kit on ready to go on patrol with JP's section. So I'm sitting at the front of the camp, uh, uh having a dip and, uh, he comes up to me and this is, I've always had this mentality is like, yeah, I might be higher in rank, but it doesn't always mean that I'm right. And, you know, and I, and I still, to this day, I take advice from people that are below me. And if, if I think it's good advice, I will take it. If I don't, I won't take it. So he says to me, he goes, Eric, you're pretty fucked up. You want to go out there and you want to fucking shoot everything that moves, right? I said, yeah, I do. I want revenge, is what I said to him. And he goes, uh, it's probably not a good idea. I said, you know what? You're right. You're right. JP, you're right. So I didn't go. But instead, I went up about an hour and a half later. So this is sort of getting into now when it comes to me now. Um, I'm in the CP and I'm collecting mail and I'm stealing all the fat fucking uh, service battalions fucking goodies and everything, putting them in the fucking laundry bag for all the guys at my camp. And uh, I hear on this in the CP IED strike. Two, this is 2 2 Bravo, IED strike, wait out. IED strike, wait out. So that was. That was the call sign that I was going to go with. So that was 8.30 in the morning, the 23rd of July, 2010. So everybody's going shit. There was two Pry Alphas, Pry Ones. Uh, one was William. He lost both of his legs, part of his arm. Other guy lost part of his hand. So there's a lot of, the two guys were fucked up, and, and William was going in and out. But he, he's, uh, he's alive still to this day. Uh, so anyways, uh, I had 2000, not 1000 things. I had 2000 things going through my mind at that time. Now with yeah. everything that went on with me. And then now my children essentially, cause I'm the dad, the, the warrant, my boys are fucking hurt. I got to get out there. And you know what? I think about it to this day. If I wouldn't have went there, I wouldn't have got injured. And it was already done. I couldn't do anything about it. But I didn't think of that at that time. <laughs> I fucking got in the lab. Uh, the two other labs followed me back to uh, my platoon house. I looked up my platoon commander, Stephen Keeble. I said, I'm going to fucking Fatula. I'm taking these two boats. 
I don't know when I'll be back. If you need me, call me on the radio. Warrant, warrant, I'm out of here. Fuck, we took off. So they're right on the south side of Fatula, and they had a cordon up. So um, we didn't do the fives and twenties. I just said stop. I, I and you could see them. You could see them off about 400 meters away. You could see them doing first aid, everything, and you could hear the bird inbound, the the Blackhawk. So I'm like, fuck it. So I took the stretcher off the off the lav and I put it across the little wadi, we ran across that, and we, me, Lecky, Acton, um, we ran, and who else? Moya, we ran to where Tutu Bravo was hit. So we get there, and then they they were loading up William on the Blackhawk, and they're loading up uh, the other dude, and we had a cordon up. So everybody, it, it was a pretty, uh, it, it was it was very stressful situation because fucking you no, know, a massive IED just went off. Um, people are injured. Um, and I went to JP and said, one thing I, I didn't do, which I don't regret it, is I didn't go in there and saying, I'm taking over. Fucking let me take over. I said, dude, this is your show. You need me. I'm on the south side of the cordon. So, so I hung out with uh, two privates boat with C9s and we were we were observing to the south. So this is I, I look back, Devin, um and I know this is what uh singled me out because there was guys that breached our cordon and uh well they they were attempting to breach our cordon and we had signs up and fired warning shots, but he didn't stop and then I shot the guy, shot him right in the fucking head. Right? And then they, the standoff was about 175 meters away. And they get out, and they had binos, and they're staring at me. They're going to get me. They're, Wally, my interpreter's there. They're saying all this shit. So they fuck off, and two other dudes come out of a, a mud hut and take the guy that I shot, put him in the back, did a UE off, they fucking go. That's at 12. That's at 12. It's 11.35. All right, so... They fuck off, and then you start, the hair starts standing up on your arms, your back, fucking out of your ears or wherever the case may be. And uh, all of this wraps up, and at 1400, July 23rd, 2010, 57 people in a patrol. I'm the 56 guy where the warrant goes. It's five to seven meter spacing. It looks beautiful. Everybody's fucking spread out. Pattern of life zero. So in the back of my head, I'm like, this is not good. There, there is not one fucking person thing around. There's, we're we're going to get hit. And as a joke, not as a joke, I said to Lackey, who was my C9 gunner, I said, you know what? We're going to get hit. Watch her six. And, and I fucking stand up, Devin. And I turn to him like this, and I walk two paces. It, uh, it hit me. So it, it, I, I, I break it down in five seconds. But before that, I, I think of all those other people that walked over the same spot. Why me? Yeah, I'm 6'5", I'm fucking back then, you know, 260 with gear, well over 300. But got it. But out of all those people in front of me stepping through this broken part of the ruins. And then when I step on it, so I think it was an RC. Remote uh, control. Right. Be, right. Because, you know, I'm, I'm fuck big dude. I'm easy to recognize. And, but anyways, it is what it is. So I counted in five seconds. The first two seconds, I was scared and, and I was confused. The third and fourth seconds, the pain and the worrying about me having no feet, no balls, and blind. Because it shattered the fuck out of my foot, bruised my bag, put shrapnel in my legs, and my chew went out of my fucking mouth and in my eyes. So my bag's hurting, my eyes are hurting, and my feet are hurting. So I'm like, fuck, who's going to love me now? (laughs) You were hurting to begin with. Yeah. So then in the fifth second, I got up and I, and I, I, 
I, I can't let the, the troops see me laying on the ground. That's, that's the honest truth. And I got up and I ran 30 meters. I fired uh, seven rounds. And then I leaned on the back of the wall and I sat down and Cameron Collins, my medic, came over to me. And uh, he looks at me and fucking hugs me. And I said, give me a fentanyl lollipop. I'm, I'm hurting. And then it just started, everything just started hurting. And then I could feel start, the adrenaline was slowly coming out of my body. Um, Private Turner and Private McLean came up to me. They were doing first aid. They're, they're going to cut my $700 rig off my shoulder. Don't cut my fucking rig. I paid $700. Clip, clip, off that goes. Um, so... The first reaction when I when I got hit, her name's Mama T, Shannon. She's a medic. I'm still very close friends with her. Uh, that's the first time I met her on tour. She was the next closest person to me when I got up. I punched her in the chest, Evan, to take her weapon, and I fired her weapon because I didn't know where mine was. And uh, to this day, like the 23rd of uh, this year, July is is the 10th year anniversary for this. And we're supposed to be having, based on COVID stuff, a big celebration. Um, but if we do, we do. But so she was, she was there, and I punched her in the chest, and she went flying. She's a heavy set woman, but she flew like a rag doll because I was just fucking adrenaline junkie. So they they got me. I remember, uh, and then it gets a little bit of, you know, I'm stoned a little bit from the. The, the pain meds, the, you know, the fentanyl and I get it. They, they, ex, they exfil me out by a lav because we're only four kilometers from Camp Shoja. When they're backing me up, they didn't, the guy in the turret was backing the lav up and they were two feet from a, a fucking IED on the left-hand side of the back. They did not hit it. It's crazy. So they load me up and I had no kit. And I do remember this. I said, I need my gun. I need my gun. You're not getting your gun. I need my gun. I need my equipment. I can't be transported on a fucking road in a lab without my gun and my kit. Um, I didn't get my gun in my kit. So as tough as anybody could be, I was, that was probably the most terrifying time of my life going from when I was injured to Camp Shoja, four kilometers, but it was the it was the longest four kilometers of my life, and then then we get in um, we get in. It was just after fifteen hunters, about 15, I think it was about fifteen thirty, and they bring me into uh, showed you to the the mer to the hospital, and then Doctor Nancy Fraser was the one who treated me, and you know my it was pretty cool. I, I actually I did get three pairs of free boots from SWATs because. I showed them my boots. I sent them a picture of it. This is what happened with an IED, and it was it was my boot, but no sole. It was gone. They sent me three pairs, so that was pretty good. A good deal. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I I couldn't fly. I was in um, I was in the hospital in Shoja for the night of the twenty third because the ceiling was low and the the uh, RPG threat was maxed because of everything that was going on, right? Um, so that morning, uh, actually that night, um, Malakowski, the CEO, and, and Stu Hartnell, who was the RSM, they uh, paid a visit to me, um, gave me my coin, still have it. And then the next day was just a fucking, it, it was the weirdest day. I get loaded on a Blackhawk, uh, flying out of Shoja to Calf. Um, and doors are open and then I just remember going up and then just banking right and I fell asleep and then I wake up on the at the airstrip there in Kandahar and they brought me in and I was treated um, so pretty much I had a multiple fractures in, in my foot my right all my all my toes were broke my ankle was broken I trapped on my right knee um, I had, uh, severe plantar fasciitis in my left, my hip, my shoulder was all fucked up and my hip 
two years later found out that it was cracked. So I did get surgery on my hip. So I was in, uh, I was in calf for, I didn't go to Germany. Um, so I was in calf and then they told me, uh, it would have been the 2nd of August of 2010 that I'm being repatriated home. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm fucking good to go. Give me another day and I'll be good to go. And I, <laughs> when my fucking foot's in a cast and I can't walk. And yeah, so I, I, I come home and then, uh, you know, every other thing that's going on. And, and uh, I look back, it'll be 10 years ago. This, this like, it's 10 years ago. Yeah. And from what happened to me then to where I am now, um, I sometimes don't know how I did it, Devin. Yeah. Well, it's a testament yeah. to you, really. Like, uh, you're a hard dude, Eric. Hard dude. Yeah. So you, you, yeah, your brother, I mean, you, you guys were both at home then, I guess, kind of at the same time. I mean, uh, did you spend time with them at that time? Yeah, yeah. So mom and dad were down a lot. So yeah, me and Michael hung out a lot. And then we got presented our sacrifice medals together. Mm. Nice. So yeah, so obviously Michael took it a little bit different than me on everything that happened. I mean, he was, he was fed a shit sandwich, but I just find it you know, I, I, I wonder how in the fuck out of 5,500 people can two brothers get injured almost in the same month? Yeah. That's fucked up. It's fucked up. It is. It is messed up. Uh, you know, your, your family, I mean, is so deep in the soldiering world, too. I mean, I remember just being around Petawawa, uh, hearing stories about your dad just all the time and i mean you grew up kind of like a soldier you and mike i mean you, you i don't think that you've been a soldier since you joined i feel like you were a soldier since i don't know i mean you were doing room inspections and had your lists to go to the yeah. store in this amount of time you know <laughs> yeah i remember those days yeah but yeah i i would say like do you want me to talk about afterwards and, 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 and what happened afterwards? I'd, I'd love to hear all about it. Yeah. So the stigma of you saying that you have an issue back there in 2010, um, you were fucked. Mm. The military wouldn't look at you twice. And you know, regardless on who listens to this, uh, I got fucked over for four years because I was on permanent category for my conditions, whether it was physical or mental. So I was completely taken off the radar as a warrant officer for four years. I would be a chief by now. I'm not lying to you. I'd be a chief. But yeah. it is what it is. I sucked it up, but it will lead me to something else. So I did all that... Uh, warrior support training uh, i listened to them i did what they told me to do um and then i got posted i get posted i do my year-long french course and i get posted to saint jean i was in saint jean for two years the first year and a half i did everything to get off pcat i did Every course, I did nine courses. I did nine BFTs. I did nine PT tests in less than two years. And I said to the, the MO in fucking, uh, in St. Jean, little fucking French dude, I said, uh, I shouldn't be on category. He goes, well, that's not for you to decide. That's for me to decide. I said, I'm a fucking warrant officer. If I don't need to be on category, I don't need to be on category. We're not used to people saying, take me off category. I said, well, take me off. So my file went to Ottawa, um, and then I get posted to um, CSOR as a CQ. Right. I remember that. June, June 6th of 16, um, I'm completely cleared. I'm completely green. Right. I remember. 
So the, I guess where I'm going with this is the, the, the four years. Yep. Yeah, um, but let's be honest. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I'm, I'm like, I'm not, I don't work. I don't wake up every day, you know, doing yoga and stretching and running fucking 15 K's anymore. Like my day consists of an eight day hike, an eight kilometer hike, the nine kilometer hike with my dog every day with a stupid fucking backpack on. Like I'm training for the Ironman. Yeah. But, yeah. but with that stigma, um, it, it is night and day compared to now. Yeah, it is. It is. Like That's they're, good. they're back. To, oh, like it's totally good. And I mean, it, it gives, I guess it opens up the doors for people that, cause look at what's going on now with all the guys that the skeletons are now being shooken in their closets and, and it's just whatever. And I mean, the biggest thing that I found for me was actually wanting to go to therapy, not going cause I have to go because right. I want to go. Right, right. Right. And, and you know, if people or whatever rank, whether it's my rank, where it's higher rank or lower rank, if people are ashamed on what's that? Hold on, just uh set some calling through here. Back, can you hear me? Can yeah. you still hear me? Okay, yeah, I just had somebody calling through. We're good. We're good. Yeah, so I mean it's it's uh it's a different I guess it's it's cut from a different onion, if if you know what I mean, compared to now. So I mean, it's I think it's it's better now. So well, I think we didn't really know about it until Afghanistan. I mean, as there were so many injuries in Afghanistan, uh, and you knew the people, and you're like, okay, if 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 they're having problems, it's legit. And uh, I think it was looked at differently just because it there were so many people who legit were hurt physically, mentally. Um, yeah, and people wrap their minds around the whole healing process, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but yeah. I just got hit. I'm a, I'm a dirty civvy now, <laughs> but Are you? I can't believe you're still rocking it, buddy. I'm so, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. So I'll, I'll, hit, uh, I'll hit 27 years in September. Yeah. Wow. And 27. I still love putting... So your foot, you, so it was all blown apart, got fixed all up, hip fixed, shin fixed. They stitched you all up and you went back to do another cup. Did you do another Ironman after that? Uh, no, I did not. No, I, but I thought you were gonna, I was, I remember you were talking to me and you're like, I'm going to do an Ironman again. I'm like, Eric, you're crazy. Man. What are you thinking? I, I I'm not gonna deny to you. I, I wanted to, but I, I did I did play ball. Yeah. After my injury basketball. Um thanks to uh fucking coding and uh Aleve I, I played, but that was one of my ways of escaping too, is playing that sport because I love it, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and and I mean don't i'm not gonna lie to you like when i play after my games now like i'm I'm getting close to 50 i'm running with 22 year olds i am not the guy that i used to be but yeah. i don't like listening to people tell me that right, right. <laughs> but yeah but it's yeah it's it is what it is right yeah it's really cool hey I, i'm i'm really glad that uh you got to tell that story um i i think it's i think it's amazing what you and your brother went through what you overcame. Uh, I mean, I remember when I first met you, when I first got to know you, um, I always thought that one day you, you probably no no kidding. You, you probably would run the CF and I, and I hope, I hope that for the sake of the CF that you still actually do get there one day. I think that that's, that's where a guy like you should be. Um, nice. So, I just wanted to share your story a little bit so people people see that there's guys like you in there doing doing these things and just a glimpse of, of what your reality is. Yeah, that's awesome, Devin. Like, 
I mean, I remember when you when you just when you reached out to me. I, I, I mean, I got a lot of time. I mean, look at you. Look at what you have did. You you did everything, and I mean, uh, I mean, you say that you do that. I look up to you because you are an example of, you know, even though I can beat you in arm wrestle, it's relevant. <laughs> <laughs> No. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, well, invite me to that party. I know I wasn't there, but if I'm around in, in July, uh, yeah, let me come down and party with you guys for that day. Yeah, so I my load my furniture gets loaded here in Gagetown on the 7th of July. Yeah. And then uh, I get start moving in, whatever, and then this this it's the tenth year anniversary on the twenty third of July. And I and I, I I don't know what's planned right now because of all this COVID stuff. But so so, so but big definitely. party, big party in Petawawa at your house, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. I don't know where it's going to be, but I would like like we're planning something. So, hey, thank you so much, Eric. No problem, Dev man. So that's it. Uh, didn't want to make it too long the first time I've done one of these. Eric's a fantastic dude, and we could tell stories all day. But, uh, you know, first first time out, uh, wanted to test the waters a little bit uh, with this format. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And big thanks to Eric. Love you, buddy. Wish you all the best. See you in July.